And this is my life. The only thing that stays consistent is the grind. Keep on grinding. Hey, what is up everybody? Welcome back to my supplements corner. Um, just wanted to get into something today that I thought you guys would appreciate. Before we get into that, I just want to say thank you all for the well wishes in regards to my wife. I mentioned in one of the last videos that I made that my wife isn't doing too good. Neither are her grandparents. And um, so, so just by default, neither am I. I'm exhausted. We've been doing a lot of running around and doctors and stuff like that. So I do appreciate everything. As far as my wife goes, um, for those of you who have asked, uh, my wife is going through something called, um, what the heck was it? Cool. It's a rare fungus or parasite. Apparently science doesn't know if it's a parasite or a fungus. We have no clue where she got it, but at the end of the day, somehow she apparently has it, unless the doctors have made a mistake. It's very serious, as you guys might have seen in the earlier clips that I just posted. We're living in like a cave. It's caused the channel to suffer because I can make a lot less videos, uh, but it just works out that today I needed to make a video in regards to the supplements. So it worked out that I'm in the kitchen. She's tucked away in the dark like Batman. And you know, we're all good for now. So I recently put out a, a video in regards to Scott Murray dying very unfortunate. There were some people who reached back and they, they actually agreed about what I said about the supplements being dangerous, how when you are trying to perpetually be like in stage ready shape like Scott was all the time, you have to basically live off of supplements. And that's something that's dangerous, right? He wasn't on steroids. He was on very likely right? Because I don't know, but very likely supplements. He was taking caffeine. He was probably living off of caffeine and probably a slew of other things that helped him to be able to not only maintain the uh, low body fat percentage that he was in for all those years, about five years, but those supplements also helped him to have enough energy to still live. And, you know, Unfortunately, you, you guys can see when, when you look at him, the sunken in face, the black circles under his eyes, he didn't sleep well. These are all things that come along with having a very low body fat percentage as well as um, living off of supplements. Uh, so very dangerous stuff. Now, I got a comment in one of the videos that I had posted previous to that last video about Scott, uh, a different video regarding the A2AM that I tell you guys that I, I utilize. Many of you are familiar with it. It comes from Derek's website, GorillaMind.com. Fantastic website, fantastic supplements, very well thought out products that are worth their weight in gold, really. Truly, when you need something done and you have a hard time doing it yourself, those supplements are going to come through for you. All of my supplements I get from him and I buy them for specific purposes because they're each used in different ways for those different purposes that they're made for. Somebody reached out and they said, how do you take the A2AM? So this is the A2AM, if you guys don't know. This is a combination of a whole bunch of stuff, but long story short, it's a diet pill. So it's this is a fat burner, it's a diet pill. It's gonna help you to lose weight, it's gonna give you energy, and it's gonna help suppress your appetite. It's also gonna help to mobilize fat stores. Does a whole bunch of great stuff when you wanna lose weight. This gentleman asked how to take it. So first of all, I recommend, if you're holding this in your hand, you look at the directions because there's very clear directions on the back. It gives you a, suggest, a suggested use, right? You probably can't see that, but regardless, it has the information that you're going to need to know on the back. It has a suggested use and that suggested use, probably the best information you're going to get in regards to how to use it. You don't have to be a genius to use this stuff, but you do have to be careful. And if you want to use it the best way possible, then you want to do a little research. So I'm happy this gentleman reached out to me. I told him how I use it, how I think he should use it. And, uh, but always follow the instructions at, at least at the very least, if you're not going to follow the instructions specifically, at least read the instructions so that you have an idea of what the manufacturer of this product is saying. Then they proceeded to ask me, what is better? What's a better supplement to take? Okay. They said this 
or creatine. Now, when I first heard this, I was thinking to myself, this person, unfortunately, does not understand what this is, what creatine is, and probably why they would want to take or not want to take either one of those supplements. This is part of a reoccurring issue that it's really good that we have the internet, really good that we have the internet so we can try to touch on these things. Because these, these might be types, the types of questions that I would have asked when I was a kid, but I had no one to ask. So I would just take everything because I thought that was what you had to do. Like, I remember when I was a kid, I used to take weight gainer, right? Because you'd go into GNC and you'd say, listen, I want to build muscle. And so the guy behind the counter, he has no clue what he's talking about half the time, unfortunately. But at the end of the day, the guy behind the counter is like, oh, you want to gain weight? All right, well, buy this mass gainer. Okay, I'll buy the mass gainer. All the mass gainer is doing is giving you a ton of calories. It's going to make you fat. This is your fault. It's your fault. Same time that I'm taking the mass gainer, I'm also taking the protein shake because you want to build muscle and then you're also trying to lose weight. So you're taking diet pills. Completely unnecessary. All of it completely unnecessary and sad because you're spending thousands upon thousands of dollars, hundreds upon hundreds of dollars, and you have no clue why you're doing it. So at the end of the day, guys, the reason why I, I, I told this gentleman that he probably doesn't want to take either of these things, this or the creatine, is because he doesn't know what they're used for. Sometimes you gotta break it down to basics, and I feel like science and studies sometimes just overcomplicates things. Number one, you don't need supplements. You, as a human being, you don't need supplements unless you have some sort of an issue where, for example, your body isn't creating its own creatine like our bodies are supposed to, or perhaps you don't eat enough foods that contain creatine. Unless you have, unless you're deficient in some kind of a vitamin, a mineral, or something, unless you're deficient in it, you should not theoretically have to take anything, okay? Now, I know this isn't a perfect world. A lot of us are deficient in a lot of things. But when it comes to creatine, is it something that you need to take if you're bodybuilding? You'll hear a lot of bodybuilders say, take the creatine, take the creatine. No, you don't have to take the creatine. You will make a lot of gains without creatine. Now, let me just show you something. This is Derek's pre-workout. This has creatine in it, okay? Amongst a ton of other stuff. But what I do, since I don't take that every day, even if I exercise, I may not take that, okay? It depends on if I feel like I need to take it. This is creatine, okay? This is a, a bulk bag, as you can see, from bulk supplements. Creatine monohydrate, that's what this is. So you can take your creatine separately from the slew of other stuff that's in this in case you don't want all of the other pump products that are in this. Because let me tell you, there's a lot of stuff in this. You're not going to need that stuff all the time. In my opinion, if you can get away with exercising without that stuff, I would say for a majority of the time, go ahead. You know, don't use it all the time. Because if you use it all the time, number one, you start to get used to it, and so it's not gonna work that great in your system, depending on what the product is. And number two, it's also expensive. And number three, if your body can get through a workout and give it 110% without this stuff, you don't need it, you really don't. So I take my creatine sometimes by my, separately from everything else, sometimes this will be all that I take in a day to avoid the other stuff, okay? You don't need any of this stuff. You don't need any of this stuff. It's not necessary. Unless you're deficient in something, supplements really aren't necessary unless you want to ramp up your production of some something that you're not getting or unless you need an extra push. To put it plainly, to put it plainly, that's what it is, guys. So. At the end of the day, this stuff is not something that you have to do, have to take. What it's used for is, in scientific studies, it's shown that it help, it's helped with power, it's helped with endurance, it's helped with strength and all this stuff. But let me, let me tell you something. Studies 
they might tell you a lot, but at the end of the day, they're not perfect. Studies aren't perfect, guys. I don't care how many studies are done. You're always going to have a study that says the opposite of what that other study said. You're always going to have it. I bet there's tons of research out there that says that creatine didn't do anything to a majority of people. And then you'll have a million studies that say that it does, that it's heavily researched and that it works. I take it, right? So I'm not against it, right? I take it. But you may not want to take it or need to take it. You may not receive any extra benefit. I'll tell you why I take it. The reason why I take it is because one thing that it is very good at, because I can't tell you it's good for power. I can't tell you it's good for endurance. I can't personally tell you that. I can tell you it will make you look bigger because what it's doing is it's allowing your body, your muscles to accumulate water. So you're going to get heavier and you're going to be able to accumulate water in your body, which is going to make you look more puffy. In, in within your muscles. So it's not going to make your fat look more puffy. It's going to make your muscles look bigger. So that's what that's going to do. And that's why I take it because it's like cheating. It's like cheating. So if you want to look a little bit bigger without doing much work, you, you could take the creatine. Will it help you in other ways? I'm sure it will. Keep in mind also something I didn't always know but found out later on, creatine can actually spark hair loss in some people. Didn't always know that. I always thought it was a rumor. Found out later it's not a rumor. It's something that's documented where in some cases that can happen. So keep that in mind. There's also reasons why maybe you shouldn't take things. All right. So do your research. Read the instructions. These things are very, very important to do before you start taking stuff. Okay. Now, we spoke about the creatine. We spoke about uh, a little bit about that pre-workout. A lot of people will hit me up and be like, Joe, I'm starting my bodybuilding journey. What supplement should I take? My opinion is nothing because you don't fix something that isn't broken. If you're ready to start your bodybuilding journey and you have enough energy to do it without any of this stuff, I would say do it. Use nothing as long as possible in order to to achieve your goal. And when, once you realize that you can't do it without the help of this stuff, depending on what your goal is, then you can implement some of this stuff. Now this stuff, I've mentioned a million times, is a diet pill. Why this gentleman compared this to creatine makes no sense and that's why I know that this gentleman is in a space where he's not sure. He's not sure of what to do. You have to know what you're taking and why. They're tools. They're tools and these tools should be used when something is broken, in my opinion. All the weight that I've lost, all the weight that I've lost, I have, I get, for a majority of the weight, if I lost 80 pounds, I lost probably 60 pounds without any supplements at all, probably even including creatine, okay? You don't need it. You don't need it. I could have lost the 80 pounds without all this stuff. It would have just been harder and it would have took longer. Human beings are impatient a lot of the time, unfortunately, and so that can cause us to do things that maybe we shouldn't do, like jump the gun and start taking supplements. Like I said, so many people reach out to me often and they're like, what do I take? I'm about to start exercising. And it's like, you don't need to take anything. Just simply exercise work out, see what it's like first. Maybe have a cup of coffee beforehand. Maybe that'll give you enough energy if you're tired. And just work off of that and let that be your, your baseline. These, these diet pills are gonna help you not eat, they're gonna help you have energy, they're gonna motivate you to exercise because they're gonna force you to move. If you work all day, for, let's say you're at a desk for eight hours, you're exhausted by the time you get out of work, but you want to exercise, this tool can help you in that instance. It can give you energy and motivation to exercise, whereas you might not have exercised if you didn't take it. Perfect example of why maybe you should take it. If you wake up in the morning and you slept for eight hours or 10 hours and you're feeling good and you have energy and you can get away with a cup of coffee to wake up if you're caffeine dependent like I am, and you can jump on the treadmill or on the stepper and use the energy that you accumulated throughout the night to exercise, do that. I would recommend do that. Because if you just wake up, if you're sleeping good, and you just wake up, and you just take these instead of having your coffee, and now you start running on the treadmill, and you're, you're busting out steps, whatever, sure, that is fine. 
that's fine. But if you have enough energy in your body already for because of sleep, because of your diet, your diet's on point, you have enough energy because of your calorie intake, you know, all that stuff, this is kind of unnecessary. Not only might it be unnecessary, but it could actually cause you to be more tired earlier in the day because this stuff might cause you, might cause you to crash because of the high caffeine content. So if you were, if you were to avoid this and just exercise without it, you're getting in your calorie burning, you're getting your exercise in for your heart, you're doing a great job without the tool. And once you've lost the 30 pounds, once you've lost the 40 pounds, and now you slept good, but you have less fat on your body, so you have less energy, or you have less glycogen because, you know, let's say, for example, you're eating less. You can go ahead and take this stuff because now this is going to help kind of pick up where your body's leaving off in order for you to reach a goal that you're trying to attain. You don't need this stuff, okay? Even this, even this L-carnitine supplement, you don't need this stuff. I do believe that it works, but a lot of this stuff also, you have to keep in mind, a lot of this stuff, you're not going to be able to actually know whether it works or not. There is no study strict enough on earth. I am truly, I am truly being honest here. There's no study strict enough and in-depth enough to tell you whether or not something like this would work, to tell you whether like amino acids work. You know, you take amino acids and you kind of hope they work. You hope that they pick up where your lack of calories leave off in terms of, you know, maintaining and building muscle. You hope that it's true. Tons of stuff you're hoping that it works. If you find something that you feel like it works and it's worth the expense to you and you feel comfortable enough to take it and you, you feel like it's not going to be detrimental to your health and you follow the instructions, go ahead and take it. Because if it's going to help you, whether it's a placebo effect or not, it might be beneficial. You know what I'm saying? Because it's helping you. Even if it's a placebo effect, it's helping you. So go ahead and take it. But at the end of the day, you don't need any of this stuff to start your training. Know why you're taking something. You see this here? I've said it in the past. This stuff, this stuff is for energy and clarity, okay? There's a huge difference between this and this. This stuff is gonna give you, it will give you energy. It will give you clarity. It will help you to focus if you're tired and you need that energy. This is going to give you tons of energy, but it's not going to be a focused energy. It's not going to help you concentrate. I've had people say, Joe, I'm a student. And I want to stay awake during class. Should I take this stuff? I wouldn't recommend it. It's got Raul sign in. It's going to cause you to be jittery. You might actually feel like you can't sit still. How are you going to concentrate? you'd be much better off taking this. These are tools. Should you take anything at all if you can concentrate already? No. If you can get away with taking a cup of coffee, if you're a student and you get away with taking a cup of coffee, I would much rather see you take the coffee than take this if it's just to stay awake. You're putting your body under less stress. You're taking less drugs, whether they're legal or not, they're drugs, and they're going to affect you in a certain way. Red Wolf sign. It's going to give you energy. It's going to help to give you energy, appetite suppression, and all that stuff. It's going to also probably cause you to be edgy. Unless you need to take it, maybe you don't want to take it. If you're just starting your workout, if you're just starting to train, you don't need it. You don't need it. If you have a lot of, let me tell you something. If you have a lot of fat on your body, you have tons of energy already. Your fat is what you need to get rid of, okay? That is all stored energy. It's potential energy. If you're exhausted and you need something to help you train because you don't have enough energy, you can take stuff like this to help you. But if you can use that fat and no, focus, use your mind, use your, your mental energy and say, I have tons of fat on me. I can get away with doing this on my own for a very long period of time. I would recommend that's what you do. Remember, if you're heavy, if you're overweight, you already have a lot of stress on your body. This stuff, while although it helps, it's going to put more stress on your body. This stuff is not natural. It's not natural. It's not natural. You were not made 
to have to ingest all this caffeine and whatever else is in it in order to function. You weren't made that way. The pre-workout. Do I always take the pre-workout? As I mentioned, I don't always take it. The reason why I don't always take it is because I don't always need it. If you don't need that extra energy, if you're not tired, and you have enough calories in your in your fat on your body in order to keep you going. Guys, if you can get away with doing this stuff without the tools, I would say do that. Does it feel nice to take it? Sure. You're getting hit in the face with a ton of caffeine. It's going to boost you up. It's got a ton of stuff. It's going to make you vascular. You know, Derek's brand, it's going to make you very vascular. It's got a lot of pump product in it. It's going to give you extra power, pushing power. Is that stuff necessary? No, you can do it all without any of this stuff. Why do a lot of people take this stuff? A lot of people take this stuff because it makes them feel good makes them feel good. Tons of energy, tons of caffeine, you know, you're getting a buzz in your head because you're buzzing off the caffeine or you're feeling jittery and you like that jittery feeling. Listen, if that's why you guys want to take it, that's all good. It will do what it says, especially when it comes to Derek's products because he does not lie to people, okay? His products are top quality, top-notch stuff. Every single thing that he tells you they'll do, they're going to do, and you're getting the best when you buy from him. But none of this stuff is necessary. You're asking me if the A2 fat burner is better than creatine, you don't know what's going on, and you need to know what's going on, or you're going to waste a ton of time, you're going to waste a ton of money, and you can take, waste a lot of your health because you may start taking things that is dangerous, that are dangerous, and that maybe you don't need. So you have to know where this stuff, the point of this stuff. Remember, it's a tool. You don't fix something that's not broken. When something breaks, that's when you grab the tool in order to fix the problem. So if I'm working out, and I have a ton of energy and I'm able to pound out my sets and I'm able to lose weight by myself without any of this stuff and I can do that, then I want to use these tools as little as possible to do what I need to do. That's what I want to do. But once something breaks, so the break would be now all of a sudden I lost so much weight where I'm tired or I'm working all day and I don't have the energy when I get outside of work or I, I for some reason can't do what I need to do as far as exercise without this stuff, that is when, that's a perfect excuse to go ahead and use this stuff, okay? Perfect excuse. But even so, use it in moderation. The, the maximum dose you can take on this is four, right? It tells you in the instructions, only take four. That's what it says. If you can just take two in order to get through your workout, I would say just take two. You may take the other two later or maybe not. Maybe you don't need it. That's what I would do. Depend on it as little as possible. Experiment, right? Start with the lowest dose. Oh, the low dose works. Now move to the higher dose when, when you find the low dose doesn't work anymore. And remember, every single thing here that's behind me, every single thing, for the most part, for the most part, anything that involves any type of a drug like caffeine or something like that, I recommend you cycle it, cycle it. So after maybe a month of using this stuff, come off it, come off the stuff, okay? Now remember, it's a tool. So for example, let's say you're coming off of caffeine. Everybody knows how miserable that will make you feel. You're going to be very tired. You're going to be exhausted. And you're going to wonder, how do I come off of caffeine and have the energy to function normally without the caffeine while I'm giving my body a break from the caffeine? Well, you can try this, Raul sign. It might make you a little edgy, but it's going to give you a ton of energy. And if you can get away with that, that is an example of using these things as tools. If you can get away with coming off of caffeine without another product, supplementing it with another product, I would say do that. You know, it's better for you. It's, you're giving your body a rest. You're giving your nerves a rest. Your body needs rest. It's very important. So cycle this stuff. Cycle it. There's nothing wrong with cycling. It's good to give your body a break. Now, for th this, for example, you want to know this stuff, you're not supposed to cycle, right? This stuff you're supposed to take every day because it accumulates in your system and it has a short half-life. It's not, it's not bioavailable when it, when it breaks down in your body and whatnot. So that's stuff you're supposed to take every day. But you have to know when and when not to cycle. And that goes back to kind of like you have to know what you're taking and why. So do the research. Remember, 
This never, this never should have been compared to creatine ever in the first place. Never. So I'm glad I was able to speak to this gentleman who had a great question. I'm glad he asked. But it never should have been compared to creatine. Two completely different products doing two completely different, you know, having completely different purposes. Really hope that this helps and have another really exciting announcement. I'm pretty sure you all have heard of the company Mueller. Mueller Sports, they're, they're well known for their tapes and their, um, their braces. Very, very amazing company. They reached out to me and they'd like to actually work with me possibly um, in regards to Handy Gym because you guys might not know, but Handy Gym has actually been acquired. The U.S. sales from Handy Gym have been acquired by Weller. So I look forward to um, hopefully working with them soon and getting a little contract signed and maybe being able to help them with Handy Gym because it really is truly an incredible product and this is an incredible company. The fact that this major company has um, um, acquired Handy Gym shows you just how much potential, potential Handy Gym has. Handy Gym is very well known in other places, uh, not here in the US, unfortunately. And hopefully we can change that because it truly is life changing, life changing. You can train from anywhere, whenever you want. You know, you're getting a really solid foundation as far as cardio as far as bodybuilding all at once with this particular machine and you can do it from wherever you want anyway talk soon be safe catch you guys in the next video